Saul hated the message of the cross and would kill for it. Stephen, well, he was willing to die for it. So what I'm Steve, saying... Are you? I'm ready, mate. Can you imagine it? I imagine I'm ready. You're right just to be a Love you, mate. Love you, mate. So we are back again in Newcastle. We are preaching the gospel, the good news, the unbelievably good news. You know, today there's been a strong emphasis in the preaching on the grace of God, on the surety of salvation, that in Christ alone he saves alone. And my brother here, Curtis, has been preaching an excellent sermon, looking at the evangelist Stephen, how he looked to Christ. And that message was so offensive to many and we preach that message that is still offensive to many today but we hope and pray that many will come to salvation because unless these people here what hope do they have because christ said he is the only way and that has been this exclusive message that we've been preaching my heart has been very much for these souls that are walking by today that they would hear and come to know christ i want to see christ's name glorified in Newcastle and in this land and across the world. So God bless you, enjoy the video for today. I believe there's an anime um, convention on. Anybody can correct us on that if they want. Um, and what we do is when you go to anime conventions, everybody dresses up as their favorite character and they put on their favorite costume and we find out a little bit about them. And that doesn't just happen in Newcastle when it's anime convention day. It's in James's park or where it is. Guys, that happens every single day. Good man. God bless you, brother. It happens every single day. You don't need to be dressed up as Goku or Naruto or anybody else. You right, brother? Yeah, What's happening, Yari? Eh? Don't big man, are you? Well, you I, smash I, I, Jimmy, lad. Listen, mate, I'm going to ask you a question here. Can you answer that for me? Hey, shit, he brought me back from the dead more than 10 times, that lad. He brought you back from the dead? God did. I like did you? It. The reason that you're still breathing now is because of God's grace. I like and he wants you to come and know him. I like and you know that, don't you? I like and what's your thoughts and feelings about that? I like, I'm just doing my own thing, but like... That's it. He's I'm just doing my own thing, innit? But he's there. I know, but mate, mate like if you it. one day, you'll he's die guided, for real. He's guiding him. I know, mate. but if he's not guiding you home to let you be in a relationship with him, then you keep going the opposite way, you know where you're going to end up, don't you? I don't Okay, man. Okay, well, Jesus Christ died for you so that if you repent and believe upon him, then you have everlasting life. Thank you for stopping, brother. I'm going to be here if you've got any questions. Harry, God bless you. Um, so there we go. That guy there who had the, 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 the humility to come and speak to the street preacher, he said, I know about Jesus, I know about life and death, I know about all of that, but you know what it is? I'm just doing my own thing. And that is absolutely the truth. What if what we're saying to you today, brother, is true? What if this gospel message, this, this message of Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the Son of God, stepped down from heaven on a rescue mission for sinful people's hearts, for their souls, and then he, bought, he was born, and he died, and he rose again. What if that's true? You know, passionate brother, Yaris. Yes, brother. God. What's your story with the Lord? My story. I didn't know nothing about Jesus Christ for most of my life. Mm. And uh, I spent most of my life in prison. Yeah. Drug addiction. Um, that's just the life I was brought up in. Yeah. My dad was a drug addict, a drug dealer. Um, and then it took for me to come to the end of the road. I hated myself, my heart weighed a ton in my chest. Mm. I hated life, I didn't think it was it. I belonged to the world. Yes. And then I attempted suicide. I hear you. I cried out to God. And I said, if you, I swear, and if you can hear me, if you're real, yeah. you can do anything with me and you can change me and make me a better person. I'll give my life to you. Come on. Things started happening, brother. I, 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 I the Lord will not despise a broken and a contrite heart. I thought I was going crazy because something was guiding me towards Bible studies in the Bible and church. Yeah. And I was thinking, because, I, like it says, 
the, the message it across was foolish. Foolishness. Those who were perishing. Yeah, well. And that's what I thought of first. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, yeah. well, why do I want to do these foolish things? But the more I started reading the Bible, the more I started seeing it in black and white on the page, what was going on in my heart, and everything that Jesus promised in the Bible, mm. he's, kept, he's kept it all, he's kept them all. Like, Your testimony rings so true to me, mate. Like, I was there. But, uh, yeah, brother, bring it in. Love you, mate. God bless you. Thank you so much. And you, mate. Honestly, you, mate. I pray for you. Thank you, mate. God bless you. Let's pray for these people here that they can see the display of the power of God. That we're not preaching fairy tales here. We're not preaching, oh, well, he's just a crutch. Listen, guys, Jesus Christ isn't a crutch. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's him and him alone that saves souls. It's him and him alone that brings dead things back to life. And one thing my brother Adam here said to me just a second ago as he shared his testimony, he says, it sounded like foolishness. It sounded ridiculous. Seriously? That this God created all things. That the creation went away from him. Sinning, going their own way. And God loved this creation such a way that he sent his son to die in their place because their wages that they deserve is death. That means hell. That means separation from him. It literally does. As you continue to sit in your castle, you store up wages. And it's uncomfortable, so you walk away. But if you walk away from the cross of Christ, you're going you're gonna to have to pay them yourself. Now the good news is that Jesus Christ stepped in in your place. The righteous, beautiful, sinless lamb was slain for your sin. So that you could not only forgiven, be forgiven, that you would not only not go to hell, but that you could be welcomed home in the arms of your Heavenly Father. But it sounds like foolishness to those who are headed to destruction. Guys, this week I was, um, I was reading the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, we see a guy called Stephen. Now, Stephen was an evangelist. And when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church, brother, early in, in Acts, Persecution on Christians started. They could not stand the fact that people were speaking out. They couldn't stand that religion was being challenged. They couldn't stand that their heart was being challenged. And when that persecution happened, there was an incident I want to talk to you about today. Stephen was zealous. Stephen was a man who was on fire for the Lord, brother. He loved the Lord, you know. He loved the Lord. He was born again and he would go out into the streets, to the synagogues, and he would share the message of salvation by faith alone. He says this law that you're trying to keep, this good person thing, isn't going to work. And the Jewish leaders, they hated that. Stop speaking that message. It's offensive, it's blasphemous, stop it. So they grabbed hold of him, and they dragged him before the courts. They started telling lies on him. They started saying, he's disrespecting Moses, he's disrespecting the law, he's disrespecting all of the forefathers, he's disrespecting it. What are you going to do about it? Now Stephen didn't do that, so when they put him before the council, after some more lies were given to him, the Bible tells us this guy's not, mate, the Bible tells us that Stephen was in the dock as such. Was he weeping? Was he gnashing his teeth? No. The Bible says that his face was of an angel. He says he was just chilled, that he was just, he was peaceful. And then the lawman goes, okay, blasphemer, give an account for these things, are these true? Did Stephen defend himself? Did he kick off and say these are liars? You know what he did, mate? The Holy Spirit moved through him because the Bible says that Stephen was a man full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. So in that moment, where he could be condemned or, or convicted or even killed, you know what he did? He looked at his audience and he took the opportunity to preach the truth. Oh, come on. He preached the truth and he told them. He took them from Abraham all the way up to current day where they were. And they said, you killed all of the prophets. He told you the truth. And they went berserk. They, they tore their garments and they grabbed hold of this man of God and they dragged him out into the streets. And they picked up stones and they started to stone him. 
Now, this was not a display of the law being carried out. This was mob justice. Now, as I stand here today in Newcastle, I wonder how many people would love to see me get arrested by that police car over there. Stop preaching that message. Ridiculous. You shouldn't be allowed to do it. You're forcing your religion down our throats. But back then, Stephen was dragged out into the open space and the Pharisees picked up stones. And as they picked up stones, they started hurling them at this man. This man who loved the Lord, this man who was telling the truth, this man out of great love and compassion was sharing the gospel with them. And as the stones started hitting his body, breaking his arms, cutting them open, as his blood poured out, as his bones broke, as he looked at them, you know what he did, brother? He prayed for them. I mean, who does that? Who does that? A man filled with the Holy Spirit and a man filled with the love of God. And as they threw stones, he prayed for them. He says, Father, do not hold this sin against them. And then he looked up and he says, oh, I see the glory of the Lord and I see Jesus at his right hand side. And this sent them even more crazy. They could not take this man's hope. They could not take this man's joy. This is what Jesus does for a man. And then the Bible says he went to sleep. In the New Testament, when believers die, it says they go to sleep until that day. And what a day that it will be. But Newcastle, I say this to you. In the crowd of people who were watching Stephen be murdered for sharing the gospel was a guy called Saul. Now Saul, Newcastle, was holding the coats. He was there. He was watching what was going on. The Bible actually tells us a few pages later that he was for what was happening. He was in agreement because Saul was a Pharisee. In fact, the Bible says that Saul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. That means he knew the law and he hated, and I mean it, hated Christians. He said he went out of his way to drag men and women out of their homes, put them in prison. He was against the message of the cross. And as he was standing watching Stephen, there's no doubt in my mind that he would be looking at this blasphemer saying that my sins were forgiven by a man on a cross who couldn't save himself. That is foolishness. It's nonsense. He deserves to be stoned. He deserves to die. And the Bible tells us this, that Saul was zealous for the law. And where Stephen was zealous for the Lord, Saul was zealous for the law. And where Saul was in hatred towards these things, Stephen was in love towards people. Where Saul hated the message of the cross and would kill for it, Stephen, well, he was willing to die for it. Can you see the contrast here? Can you see what I'm saying? Saul hated the message of the cross. Stephen loved it. Saul was willing to kill for it. Stephen was willing to die for it. Stephen, he was an evangelist. He taught Jesus Christ. He's with the Lord. He's in, he's in heaven. And we're going to go, either go to heaven or hell when we die. But you're going to heaven, me that I'm going to heaven. So am I. How are you going, how are you getting to heaven? Same, but you're getting there, you damn Listen, my name's Curtis. Change the C word for Curtis. Okay. Jazz brother. The way, how do I know I'm going to heaven? I know I'm going to heaven because I've trusted in Jesus Christ for my salvation, mate. No other way. I'm holding on to him to get there. Who? Jesus. That's the only way. All other ways need to help me. How are you? You want to go now? Uh, I don't think you're ready to meet the Lord. <laughs> so what I'm saying... Where are you? I'm ready, mate. Yeah. You, know what, you know what, Stephen? As Stephen was getting his head caved in by stones, he looked up and he went with a smile because he had confidence that he was going to go. And I have that same confidence, no matter what happens here, to live as Christ and to die as gain. And do you know who couldn't say that at the time? Who? This guy called Saul, because Saul hated Christians. He thought this was foolish. He thought it was nonsense. Mm. But you know what happened to him? You know the big difference between Saul and Stephen? One encounter with Jesus. He was on his way on a road called the Damascus Road. He was blinded. He fell to the floor by the power of God. And a voice said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? As you persecute Jesus as people, you persecute him. That's how close they are, right? Now, as Saul 
was on the floor. He said, Lord, Lord, who is this? Like, he got humbled really quick. See, we've got people walking around here swaggering, well, where's God? Prove it, prove it, prove it. Mate, when you feel the power of God, you're humble. You're on the floor, you're humbled, right? So Saul was humbled. And in that moment, what Stephen said made sense. The same woman he looked at, that he wanted dead, that he was mocking, that he thought was absolutely nonsense, it made sense. Can you imagine it? I imagine it right just to be a study. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So I ask you here today, mate, right? What do you say about Jesus? Take the mic before. No, I'm good, mate. I'm here preaching. You can, mate, listen. Yeah, a lot longer than I did. Mate, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on, you've got to get right with the Lord. People manifest in the name of Jesus. But when you're in Christ Jesus, mate, you fear no man. What can man do to me? Nothing. And I've stood here time after time preaching the same gospel to hundreds of people. And people get in your face, you shout in the spit, and they mock. So your heart is not against me, it's against Jesus Christ. Just like Saul's was, but like I just said in the river, one encounter changes everything, Newcastle. Just one. Just one. You've just got to encounter Jesus. See, Saul went from hating the Lord to loving the Lord, from trying to kill the preacher to being the preacher of preachers. He went from the Pharisee of Pharisees to tearing down those who thought that the Lord could save them, brother, because if the Lord could save them, Saul would have been saved. He was the man. But Saul had to face a humbling reality that nobody's good, not one. That nobody is truly righteous, not one. Apart from God. I believe in God. Do you? What do you believe about him, sister? I'm a, I'm a Christian. I are you Christian? Are you? Praise the Lord, you're born again. Yes. When did that happen? If you don't mind us asking, you don't have to tell us. Yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. And you know Jesus is your saviour, yes. so when you die, you get to I'm go be with him. Yes. Amen. Not because you're good, because he's good. Yes, right. Not because you're holy, because he's yes. holy. Yes. Now listen, yes. when you know, you know. Yes. When you know, you know. One encounter with Jesus say, changes everything. Will that give us two seconds? I'll take this off, right? I'm going to finish this up. The law leaves you no option. Have we got together? We can, I, I hope not. I hope not. But you know what I really hope? You know, let us sum this up for you here, right? So, wanted Stephen dead. Stephen looked at the crowds of people and loved and prayed for them. A little bit later, as I said you on the Damascus Road, Saul was saved by grace, by the grace of Jesus Christ. And you know what the beautiful thing about the gospel is, mate? When Saul goes to glory, when Paul goes to glory, he will see Stephen and they'll be walking towards him with arms wide open, saying, brother, you made it, because everything is forgiven in Christ. Right, same, yeah. All the death. Same, yeah. We're all going to see him. So, we are equal. I'm going up to heaven, mate. Me and you are equal. We're equal in Christ. That's right. what it says, Christ right? Christ the Lord, I. Christ the Lord. So I'm saying to you guys, and this is the beauty of the gospel, and this is why we come out here. There's nothing that you could have done that is too far gone from the grace of God, but you must come to the cross and leave it there. You must come to Jesus because you can't be forgiven. If Saul, the persecutor of Christians, the Pharisee of Pharisees, can be saved and used for the glory of God, so can you. And I want to tell you this, before, the, before I was a preacher, I did some things in this place I'm not proud of, brother. I lived to the beat of the world, I lived for myself, I was a prideful, obnoxious man, who was a sinner. Paul says that he is the sinners of sinners, and I'm the greatest sinner that I know in my life. I did some things that I'm so ashamed of, but when you throw them at the grace of God, when the grace of God washes you clean, that is freedom, that is liberty, that is happiness, and who the sun sets free is free indeed. So as you brothers walk away, I ask you to walk towards the cross of Jesus Christ, because it is there and there alone that there is salvation, hope and joy and peace forevermore. This world is passing away, the things of this world are passing away, the plans and plots of the devil are going to be trampled and crushed underfoot, but I'm asking you, Today is a day of salvation. Will you repent? Admit there's a problem. Stop heading towards destruction in your sin. Let Anoya have your mind changed and believe upon Jesus. And you shall be saved. The problem is the human heart. And the evidence is everywhere. What is your response to the gospel? Will you have a Damascus Road moment here today?